Welcome to this next SCBA reflection. Uh, thank you for listening and thank you for watching. Uh, thank you also for all your comments and messages that people have sent through encouraging us over the last few weeks and months. I brought you down here to the Avon and Kennet Canal. It's where I spent my holiday with my family earlier this summer. I love canal boats. I love the water. I love boats. I love that sense of journeying from one place to another. But what I particularly value about canal boating is the slowness of the pace of life. You can only travel at three miles an hour. Which reminds me of a book that was written by Kusuki Koyama back in 1979 and he simply entitled it The Three Mile An Hour God. And he reminds us that when Jesus came, he did ministry at three miles an hour. I wonder what ministry looks like if we were to slow down and what God might do amongst us so much more than we could ever imagine if we allowed him to have the slowness of his pace. What I've noticed about walking is that uh, you notice things that you just wouldn't notice if you were rushing by or running past. Last time I was on this canal, I noticed a number of herons. They just stand really still and serene. But if you're going past quickly, you just wouldn't see them. But if you're going past slowly, you do, and even have time to take a photograph or two. Jesus in Luke 8 notices someone in a moment of intense pressure. He's been approached by Jairus, and his, Jairus' daughter is dying. If there was ever a moment to rush, now was a moment to rush. And yet Jesus walks towards Jairus' home. And in that moment, in that journey, a lady who's suffering from internal bleeding reaches out and touches Jesus. Easy to be missed in the rush, in the intensity of the moment. But Jesus doesn't. He notices her. He stops. He talks to her. He heals her before he moves on. To Jairus's daughter. You know, in the rush we can miss something really important. We can miss someone in need, someone who needs time. When we minister at three miles an hour we begin to notice some of the most important things that are going on around us. So what I've discovered is when you get on a boat, time seems to slow down. You can't add time to the clock, but what you can do is you can kind of extend that time. There's much more time to just be with people, to talk, to relate, and to listen to each other. When I was a young person, I remember going on canal boat trips with uh, Frank and Sue Olive. And I knew Frank really well, but it, I remember I really got to know Frank when you stood on the back of a boat, often for several hours, just talking about everything and anything. I discovered I didn't know him superficially anymore. I knew him at a much deeper level. And we need to do that with Jesus. We need to slow the pace down and spend time with him, not superficially, but spend time with him so that we might know him at a far, far deeper level than we have before. So one of the dangers I've discovered in myself is that I often think if only I could work harder or run faster or somehow get a faster internet connection, I could achieve so much more. You know, if you have a car that goes 100 miles an hour, the temptation is to drive it at 100 miles an hour, although it may not be the most sensible thing to do. When you get on a canal boat, you can only go at three miles an hour, two to three miles an hour. It limits you. The journey is limited. You can't rush through locks or anything like that. You're limited to the boat and you soon realise that you just have to go at the pace of the boat. And I found that really, really helpful that actually often we just need to realise that we are people that are limited. We have weaknesses. We, are, we, we aren't able to change 
anything really. It's only God that can do that through us. If we go back to Luke 8, what we discover is that something remarkable happens. In Jesus' slow pace of noticing the lady, he heals her. But in that moment, Jairus' daughter dies. But then Jesus goes on to raise her from the dead. Something even more powerful takes place in the slow pace of Jesus' ministry. I wonder what it might be like if we allow our ministries to slow, to be limited to who we are and what we are, and allow God to do what only God can do. My sense is God might do something even more powerful through us than we could ever imagine. I'm fascinated as I consider that God didn't send Jesus in a period of history when the combustion engine had been discovered or we discovered a you know, super fast internet connection. Instead, he sent Jesus at a time when the life was lived at three miles an hour. I just wonder whether if we could capture some of that slowness of God, the pace of God, that we might begin to notice things that we have not noticed before. That we would hear from God in a way perhaps that we've not heard from him before and get to know him at a deeper level. That we might realise our, our own limitations and we might discover that God can do, do something far greater through us than he's ever done before.